uh, Margaret Fitzsimmons. I don't see her. No, I guess she left. Um, this, oh, there, there she you is. Are. You're I'm hiding. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Margaret Fitzsimmons. Um, I am speaking tonight as a resident, but I am a ma I have a Master's of Architecture. Oh. Press, try, try and over? press the green button. It's on. Okay, I think just just put closer to it. Okay. <clears throat> Is that better? Can we start yeah. over? Yeah. Thank Name you and address. So much. I'm yeah. down to the wire. So um, I have a master's in architecture and I'm a 25 year practitioner. I'm also on the Green Living Advisory Board, but again, I'm speaking as a, as a resident tonight. Um, my pre presentation tonight is more interactive. So I have a handout that's coming around to everyone. Um, tonight, I would like to address the waterfront master plan, but my focus will be uh, specifically on the downtown waterfront pro properties of Wildflower and Silver Palm. Now this is extremely timely since after all these years it's un in planning stage right now and we've just had a recent presentation. Um, so I would really like to address um, a lot of missing elements that we uh, are finding there. I'd like to point out too, I know this is a talked out issue, <laughs> but this is really an opportunity for us to step back as a community. This can be a real unifying um, time for our community right now. Put all our differences behind us. We are where we are. And if you've been to any wonderful, active, amazing waterfronts around the world, you'll know that with the right planning and if we unify as a community to come together, this can be an amazing waterfront property that can rival any around the world. So let's take a look at what's already happened. Um, I'm going to always have a problem with this. There we go. So thanks to City Council and City uh, to having engaged a, a really strong planning firm, EDSA. Um, we are well underway in the process. They've done a lot of great work to date um, and had some interactive um, public sessions, which we really certainly appreciate. That makes all the difference in the world. I also want to um, mention back to the visioning session that was before EDSA that was led by Council Singer and then um, Council O'Rourke and several architects in town including myself, which produced a lot of um, images and ideas that weren't necessarily seen in some of the um, EDSA original images, and so that's why I wanted to revisit it so that we don't miss anything. So we've completed a lot of things, but the one thing that I see that's not completed is a programmatic document. It's basically a design and planning pr uh, program requirement that we as a community, all of us, put together and give to the architectural planning firm to say, these are the things we want you to include in the plan. And forgive me if, if that has been given and I haven't seen it. I didn't, I don't think so because it's not public. And I thought we could take a look at their plans and I can tell you why I think they're missing a few things. Um, if you look at the two options, and, and I want to ca caveat this by saying EDSA is an amazing, wonderful planning firm. They've done spectacular, successful waterfronts around the world. So if given the criteria that we want as a community, they will be able to deliver us, deliver for us, I have no doubt. So quickly, um, if you look at the site, the first thing that I noticed was that it really turns its back on the downtown. This is a different kind of park. It's located in our downtown. It's not like any of the other parks that are more isolated and stand on their own. So it really needs to be treated differently. It also is disconnected from Silver Palm, and it was not, uh, they didn't zoom out and look at the rest of the city. So what are, what are the missing steps that I see that have happened? So what I'm saying is step one, they need to zoom out. And this is where the interactive part happens. The handout that I gave you is what I've done is I put together what I believe is just a draft, a start of a list where all the things I've been hearing in the community and people have mentioned and from my professional experience that need to be in this program document that goes back to EDSA. We can use it as a starting point. We can mark it up tonight. You can take it where you want to from here, but I thought we can make it like a working session. 
So first to zoom out, what I think a missed opportunity is that they didn't really consider this site in the context of the greater downtown. We've talked about this before, that this is an opportunity to revitalize the downtown, and this property, if you see where it's located here, can be the crown jewel of that. It can actually help stimulate the economy, stimulate traffic to businesses, and tie in everything from Meisner all the way down to the beach. We can really start to revitalize that Palmetto core and make that like our main street downtown. The second one is to make the downtown waterfront a top priority. I know we have a lot of waterfront plant uh, things to cover and um, uh, properties to cover, and this one, I believe, really needs to be the number one focus. Commit to joining it together. I thought we'd talked about this, but nonetheless, um, I think that needs to be presented to them because they didn't present a plan that we see like this that shows everything working together and what the maximum use of the site could be. Connect it to downtown, as we've talked about before. Integrate with other citywide strategies. If we can eliminate the parking on the site, that would be key because it's a, it's a precious site and to have asphalt compromising use of that kind of land um, is, a, is sad. So parking off-site at satellite locations, work with a network of uh, blue rays by connecting the water taxis and boats, as we've talked about before, so that we can have this amazing experience of people coming to the parks, visiting all the different parks, and then coming back downtown and going for dinner or going shopping and having that experience of downtown together with the parks and just making it accessible by all these different means so that we can eliminate and minimize the traffic and, and cars downtown. Utilize um, economic development strategies. We can learn from other cities that have been wildly successful, especially in public-private partnerships. It's incentive for businesses to invest in it because it will bring business to them. And then from this, we're creating this design and planning program document that will come back. That's kind of what it looks like a list of all the criteria. So in addition to that, what other programmatic elements did I find that were missing from things that we've talked about and things that are key ingredients to other successful waterfront plans? And the first thing is to make sure that it's designed to be active by day and by night. If you Google any 21st century urban park in, in uh, Google, and look at the revitalization of downtowns, the same thing is happening across the country that's happening here. Many people are relocating back to the city. They want to live, work, and play all in the same area without having to get in a car. They want a city that has a heart and soul in a downtown and offers all these kinds of amenities right there, and this, this location is perfect for that. The waterfront walking path that connects all the way around the sites and back to Fifth Avenue and Palmetto Park sidewalks so that you can have a continuous walking experience all the way down Palmetto Park, around the site, and all the way down to the beach. Of course, a connected and lively underpass. We've talked about before how important that is to this, make this connection, and there's so many cool things that could be done. And this is one that I know has been a sensitive subject, but there are ways to get dining on this site and still fall within the guidelines that we're working with. Just take a look at some of these images here. These count as pavilions, and there are so many innovative ways that great dining, breakfast, lunch, dinner, can be um, planned on this site. If you look at the one on the lower left, this is a very formal outside dining area. It is the entire restaurant for the um, Villa Borghese Gardens Museum in, um, in um, <clears throat> Rome. Excuse me. They have a tiny kitchen that just heats things up, and this is a formal events happen all the time, <clears throat> and also it's a revenue generating for people who um, reserve it for um, parties and so forth. A variety of retail and refreshment pavilions, um, really, again, innovative ideas throughout that. Incorporating the public art, this could almost be like a sculpture garden if you've been to any of those. It's a joy to walk around. Incorporating the water features and, and the right kind of landscaping, enough shade trees and so forth. And then having multiple settings for gatherings. I mean, imagine if you're working downtown. You can, instead of working, uh, having a meeting with your team in the fluorescent light of your office, you could grab everybody and go down to the waterfront and have a team meeting there. You can take a walk during the day with another business partner and talk about um, important business issues. 
Um, of course, the normal things that we think about, like gathering for the boat parade and other kinds of events like that. Maybe it's a, events that we plan that are wine tastings, food tastings, street fairs, things like that. This would be a key place to have all of that happen. And then flexible space for those types of events as well. Promoting health and sustainability. And considering that the view, views proportion is scale, which I feel like EDSA would be very responsible in doing that. So I guess my ask tonight is um, if, if we can have City Council endorse uh, the creation of a, a document that goes back to EDSA so they have a specific set of criteria that includes what we all as a community have put in. And I may not have m made them all here, but I created a start, and I just wanted to do something to give us a start to get going. Great. So if anybody has any questions or input, I'd, I'd love it. Cause all right. Well, it's thank you so much, Ms. Goodsons. We appreciate all the work you put into this. And, Madam um, Mayor. Yeah, Ms. O'Rourke. I'll jump right in because okay. this is one of my favorite topics. Margaret and I have worked together uh, and with with Councilman Singer. A lot of those pictures are familiar. Um, I actually, uh, um, when I uh, talked to the city manager earlier this week after we had the presentation from uh, ETSA, uh, I asked, could we not have some personal input with Song and Associates on the campus plan? We had individual interviews with them, and I thought that was a bit of a missing link in our communication with EDSA as far as giving them our input as to what you know they could do each of these parks and this came out um, you know very successfully at the present and their presentation was terrific yeah. uh, however what some of the residents said was each park has to have its own brand and personality and it really was sort of more of an overall um, comprehensive look at all the parks which is what they're tasked to do but I think we're, we might be missing the personality of each park so uh, or each green space on the water so it, you know as far as this um, this downtown uh, space or adjacent downtown space I think we have a great opportunity to connect it with our downtown and through the blue way connect it to our beach side so you know I think that it w it's an important conversation to have to set this off because it'll probably be one of the first ones that will probably attempt to uh, to conquer in the overall plan of the 14 parks so uh, I, I think it's a great idea to have you know some really specific input maybe a little workshop with them or a workshop between us and information and fill out this program yeah. so uh, and maybe I'll ask the city manager did they get a program from us at all with any information as to asks or what we might be looking for um, I don't believe so I think they were developing that from the citizen and resident input yes of which we we've, we've had two right so, so um, and they so will be meeting individually each council member they're good thank you for that, that I yeah. appreciate that so uh, you know I'm on board for this I would suggest that we uh, you know have this conversation I think that you know it's been a controversial spot and uh, you know the food component is you know controversial I think we can probably do something that you know will meet the needs and meet our laws and uh, so you know I'm on board I, I'd love to hear from you know from the rest of you Mr. Singer thank you madam chair I know that EDSA said that they would be scheduling follow-up with the council both individually and collectively when is that set for Mr. Arnold as far as you know the uh, collective presentation will be in September okay and but I believe they'll be meeting in August individually with council members to okay. get input. And do you think that's the first? I know we have a lot of meetings in September with budget. Do you know right now if we're tentatively set for the first or second meeting in September? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, because, no, I, I echo these concerns. I think, again, Ms. Fitzsimmons, thank you for your work on this presentation. Thank you for your help last year. Um, a lot of those images were familiar, and some of the, you picked some of the, two of the most popular ones, I think, the residents of that 130, 140-person session picked as well. Uh, you know your ideas were inventive then they remain inventive and look forward Thank to working you. to to bring them forward and I do agree I think you know we we have to prior just to recap for everyone we had EDSA come in with a wide range of presentations for our 14 parks uh, really incredible stuff um, but it was more of a wish list um, I there's not enough money in the budget certainly to oops, not enough money in the budget certainly to encompass all of that um, all in one fail swoop, but I do think it's important that we prioritize parks, and I appreciate your suggestion that we focus on the downtown. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I May think I respond like to one thing? Yeah, quickly. Real we're, quick. We're, yeah. So just as an architectural professional, and many of you may know this from working on projects too, what you expect as an as EDSA on EDSA's side is a document that says these are the criteria and guidelines that, that need to be implemented into their plan. So I'm sure if we gave them that list, they would come back with a redesign that really hit spot on with a lot of that. So thank okay. you so much Great. for your time. Great. Appreciate thank it. you so much. We Margaret, appreciate thank all, you for all your, your hard work. work.